In this video, we're going to take a still image and make it look like it's footage. Going from this to this kind of thing here. This is a great technique to use if you don't have stock footage or if you don't have a shot of what you need, but you're able to grab a still off the internet or snap a picture with your phone, which is actually what happened to us in our latest little project, the Craigslist Vampire. So we needed a shot like this to cut to in the edit, but we didn't have an opportunity to actually go out and shoot some nice video of a van. We didn't have a van. This may or may not be somebody's van. We don't know. <laughs> and so sweet Dan on his way home from work one day just went around taking pictures of random vans <laughs> that we thought might work for this thing. And so these are just shot on an iPhone. And the very first thing that I would recommend that I totally did not tell Dan to do is to get a shot where there aren't trees in the background, because pretty much what we're doing here is going to be a dead giveaway if we have trees and they're not moving in the wind. So a lot of these have trees, so many trees. But this one, even though it has trees, it's less of a big deal. So this is why I went for this still for our shot here. The first thing I'm going to do is just give you the easy version, just the just the ridiculously easy version. OK, drag this into the edit page in Resolve, scale it up and then go to effects, open effects. And if you have the studio version of Resolve, the paid version, there is a effect called camera shake. Drop that on there. And guess what? With a little bit of tweaking here, we have sort of an illusion that this is actual footage because it's, you know, kind of has a shaky camera. Now, this only really works if it mixes up with other shaky camera shots. If everything's locked down, it might be weird to cut to something with a shaky camera. In fact, this whole thing was shot locked down and we added camera shake to all of the shots literally just to make this shot look a little better. <laughs> it's so cheap, such a cheap trick. But this little camera shake is actually added in post. And that's just so it doesn't feel weird when we go to this shot, because it's a little bit more convincing if you have a little bit of movement to the shot. OK, so that's the easy version. But we're going to get a little bit more advanced, a little bit, a little bit, we're going to go a little bit crazy here. <laughs> Come on, do it. Do it. There are a few things that are pretty obvious when you start mixing this shot with the footage around it. One of them being it's shot on a totally different camera. The colors are different. The depth of field is different. The lenses are different. There's so much stuff that's different here. The depth of field here is just pretty much infinite because again, this was shot on an iPhone. It doesn't tend to have really shallow depth of field. It was a bright sunny day. There's no ND filters. It was just a snapshot, right? And so the background here is going to be just pretty much as sharp as a photo like this can be. And so mixing this footage with this footage, it just looks very different. So some of this we can fix just, you know, by pushing maybe a little color boost into here, maybe taking the temperature a little bit warmer. That's going to feel a little better right off the bat. But the sharpness and kind of noise here is what gets me. So let's do a little bit more advanced version here. Let's go over here to the media pool, right click and say new fusion composition. And we'll call this van two because I already made van one. OK, so van two. And we're just opening this up in Fusion. I'm going to drag a background node down here. And it's going to default to our project settings. What we actually want is the resolution of our timeline, which is kind of weird because it's anamorphic. It's 3840 by 1440. OK, that's a nice widescreen format here. And this is going to set the resolution of our canvas. OK, the background always sets the resolution. So now. Let's grab our van picture, van2.jpg, and merge this over. And let's just frame this up here. Shift spacebar XF for a transform. Let's keep the size, maybe change the angle and kind of do something sort of like that. So there's the shot of our van, just a little bit better framing. We are going to do some color on this, but there is really kind of the, the big bang for your buck here is going to be the depth of field stuff because that's going to not only make this mix with the other shots a little better, but it's also going to fix a lot of this kind of nastiness around the trees and everything. I'm just going to hide our page navigation here. So there are a few ways that you can add depth of field to something. Essentially, there has to be some way that you blur the background and you keep the foreground not blurry. And some of you DaVinci Resolve fans at this point are going to say, hey, I bet you're going to use depth map. Well, we can. I'm going to hit shift spacebar and type DEPTH. 
depth map right here. And let's run this into the depth map. Uh, this, by the way, is only available in the paid version of Resolve. And here this will figure out kind of how things, how far away things are magically. I don't know how it does it. It's kind of crazy. The one thing we'll do is invert this depth map. And that's going to give us a good map of the van and everything. And this kind of thing we can use with an effect called depth blur. Depth blur like this. And let's just run everything through this depth blur. Run the depth map into the green input of the depth blur. And let's see what it does. Blur channel instead of Z, we're gonna pick Luma. And then let's take this depth map and let's bring this here on the second viewer. And we're gonna color correct this so that this van is black and the background is white. Because whatever is black is gonna be in focus and whatever is white is going to be not in focus. So let's take this brightness and contrast. We'll make sure to clip the black and the white and we'll push make sure we're actually looking at this. We'll push this up until the foreground, the, the van is black. There we go. So now in this depth blur, we can push up this blur size and we're gonna be blurring the background and not blurring the van. And this is gonna do a pretty decent job. You know, this is like level two quickness. So I'll push up this X and Y and that's going to just give us a little bit of blur on the background. And that's gonna look better than it was. If this is just like a one second shot and you don't have lots of time to finesse this and make it look great, that's a great way to do it, okay? But if we were to look a little bit closer, we'll notice there's some problems here. This depth blur is still blurring the edges of this van and even the blur that it's adding is kind of weird looking. It's a box blur and so we can switch this to um, soften and that's gonna help or super soften. That's gonna make it a little better. So that fixes one problem, but the edges of this are still kind of weird. And we can mess around with the depth map and everything. But long story short, if you want this to look really good, you're probably gonna have to do some manual tracing out. The great news is that this is a still. And so you only have to trace it out once. You don't have to do any tracking or roto or anything like that. So let's go ahead and just get rid of all of this craziness. And we're gonna do something else. First thing let's do is isolate our van. We can do this a few different ways. What I'm gonna do is just take a matte control, run this into a matte control. A matte control does a bunch of stuff, but one of the things that it lets you do is apply a mask and cut something out later in the flow. So if I wanted to cut out this van, I could cut it out in the media in, but I'm gonna to want to use the background and stuff of this. I could also duplicate the media in and the transform. You know, I could do something like this and then cut it out here if I wanted to, but I like to work in a way that kind of flows everything down into itself. So this matte control, we can apply a polygon mask and we can put that into the gray input, which is the garbage mat. And whatever I select here for this matte control, it's going to cut it out. I can invert it and that's, it's gonna keep the, uh, the selection. So I'll just get rid of this and not invert it. So I have this set up to cut this out. So I'm just gonna zoom way in and we're gonna do some magical editing here so that you don't have to watch me go over this entire van. Activate. Occurred. And I'm gonna zoom in here and just push this soft edge up just a little bit, just so it's not super sharp when it's cut out. Okay, great. I'm not really worried about the bottom part right now. I'm just worried about this edge. And now we can take this and we can merge this on top of itself, and then nothing happens, yay! But here's what we do. We can take any kind of blur, I'll just grab our regular blur, and put this here behind our cutout, and as I blur this, whoosh, you see where we're getting at? You see what we're doing? Oh, I get it! You see it, as we blur this, it's going to give us a much better result than we had before. And so now we can blur that background, and it's just gonna look a little bit nicer on the edges. So that's like level three. I think I said the other one was level two. <laughs> Maybe the other one's level zero, it doesn't matter. This is like the next level, okay? I'll just fix this real quick so that's not horrible. Maybe we'll even mask this blur to only kind of be back here. There we go. Again, yeah, that's just like kind of a quick fix. But for me, it's still not quite great enough. Here's why. When you zoom in, you can see on this blur, 
as I change this around, there is a little bit of a glow behind this van. And that's because what it's doing is it's taking this van and it's blurring it out a little bit. And so we can kind of see that blur happening behind this cutout. So if I turn this off, we can see it's blurring the van. And that's what we're seeing behind everything is the blurry version of this kind of peeking out from behind that cutout. And sometimes it's fine. Like this isn't that big of a deal, but sometimes it looks like it's glowing. <laughs> so what do we do? Let's take that blur off. And I'm also going to turn off our van cut out. Now, because it's blurring the edge of this van, it's kind of peeking out. What we can do is sort of clone out the outer part of the van. So it kind of just like shrinks the van a little bit so that when we add that blur, it doesn't have that blurry version kind of peeking out. If that's confusing, I'll show you what I mean. We're going to use a node called paint paint like this. Hold shift and just drop that in there. And the paint node is kind of like a little mini version of Photoshop that lives right here inside of fusion. And so this second icon right here, this is the clone brush. And I'm going to combine that with this tool right here, the single brush tool. And so I'm going to select that and the single brush. And now I have a clone stamp. I'll open up my brush controls, make sure my softness is good. And I'm going to do just a horrible job, just such a bad job of this. <laughs> you guys will, you'll make fun of me. It's going to be terrible. All right. And how this works is you hold alt and click wherever you want to copy from. And then you just click and paint where you want to copy to. So I'm just going to kind of go in on this, just pushing it in, you know, a little bit on each side. See what I'm doing here. I'm just kind of erasing the outer edge of this and I'm just picking wherever I can anything that kind of runs into this. I'm just trying to kind of continue that texture over. See this tree. We're going to do some, do some stuff here. We're just going to copy and paste this little edge and we're just going to do our darndest to kind of duplicate the edges here. And the great news is that you don't have to be that great at this because it's going to be really blurry. <laughs> That's the nice thing. There we go. Just kind of getting rid of this stuff. I'd say that that was a pretty good job right there. Take the size down a little bit. And let's just keep copying this over. All right. So what we've done is just kind of squished in the edges of the van. When we run this through a blur, so we could just use this same blur, push up this size. We can blur it quite a bit. And when we put this top on, bloop, we don't have the glowing edges there. Look, because it's blurred, but it's way back here instead of out here. It's kind of a lot of work, <laughs> but making things look really great is sometimes a lot of work. Okay, so now we have this kind of clean plate here. We've done a little bit of magic on. And so this is kind of the next level. Now, the type of blur that you use is also kind of important because the camera that we were shooting with had an anamorphic lens on it which means that one of the characteristics of that is that the blur has a certain feeling to it. And so again, in the paid version of Resolve, there is a node called Lens Blur. Lens Blur does its best to try and imitate the actual kind of blur that you get from a physical lens. And so you can see the difference here just in the bokeh right here. So if I change that blur size, we can see that this is actually a hexagon shape. So that looks a lot more realistic. Now, if we want to be really good about this, we can go back to one of our actual shots here. And let's take a look at the bokeh here. It's mostly just soft, but we can see these little shapes here. And this is kind of what we're looking at. It's kind of these ovals. That's what the bokeh looks like. And so what we want to do is imitate those ovals. Let's go back to our comp here. And this is not oval status yet. Let's go to lens blur. Just switch this to octagon and change the blade curvature to be totally curved. So that's just going to give us a circle anamorphism. We can change this and that's going to stretch this one way or the other. And so we want that to be kind of an oval shape, which technically is going to be about 0.667 for anamorphism because these are a 1.5 anamorphic lens. I know this is getting so crazy but it means that it's kind of being squeezed down to 67% or so. 
on the x-axis, and that gives us these ovals. See what we're doing here? Now we have a much more realistic blur. Push up this blur size a little bit, and you see that's looking familiar. Now we put our van back in here, and it's looking pretty good. It's looking a lot better, lots better. And let's mostly put this on back here. Soften that out a little bit. And that's giving us a much better result, a lot more realistic, looks a lot better. It's going to mix with our footage a lot better, okay? The other kind of characteristic of these lenses that we're using, so check this out. So not only do we have that bokeh there, but we also have this kind of fringing on the lenses. And so it's kind of bluish, greenish on this side. And on the other side, we have more of this kind of magenta coming in. This is called chromatic aberration. The lens kind of splits the colors like a prism, and it's just not quite lined up on the edges. So we can use a effect called chromatic aberration removal, which is meant to kind of fix that, but we can also use it to kind of overcorrect it and mess it up. So what we wanna do is take this, maybe this green and purple scale, and just push this around and just see what we can get going here. Let's push this around like this and see we can kind of get those colors, start to get those colors a little wonky, like that. I'm gonna change that around a little bit just to add a little bit of that imperfection to the lens because that, that's another thing with these uh, anamorphic lenses is they're just not that sharp and perfect. They're a little bit blurry. In fact, we could probably even take this original image and make and make that just a tiny bit blurry too. We'll just add like a one pixel blur on it. Maybe not even that much, maybe like 0.6. So we just, just kind of diffuse that a little bit because when we actually look at footage, it's not going to look that, that crisp. So now this is looking a lot better. It's looking a lot more like we were actually shot this with our proper camera. <laughs> Ironically, we're messing up a bunch of stuff on it. And the other thing is that when you play a still and you zoom way in, you can tell it's a still because absolutely nothing is moving. So what we want to do is add a little bit of noise to this because anytime that you have footage, you can actually see the noise if you, if you were to zoom in. Not that anybody's probably going to zoom in here, but it's sort of subconscious. And so I have some noise that we recorded with our actual camera. And it looks like this. Look at this. It's dancing noise. All right. This is noise that we can put over everything and then use a apply mode of overlay. And let's color correct this too, because ideally this is gonna be kind of a medium gray and there's gonna be some parts that brighten and some parts that darken, but I didn't quite do it right and it's just a little bit too dark. And so when we put this over our footage, it's darkening it a little more than I would want it to. And so let's take this brightness and contrast, push up the gain just a little bit and let's see what this looks like. So now it's a little bit closer. It's still kind of pushing that around a little bit, but it's not totally changing the exposure here. So we're just kind of putting a little bit of grain on there. And then we're gonna take this grain. We're just gonna take the blend of this merge and take it down. And I'm just gonna kind of push it up until I notice it. Somewhere in there maybe, 0.38. So that's just 38%. We're just putting a little bit of grain on here and you'll be able to tell when you zoom in what this is like. So here's the difference. So here it is with the grain and here it is without the grain. So the grain, without the grain, it just looks too, looks, looks too nice with the grain. It looks good. It looks real, right? Overall, what we've done is we've taken this image. We've blurred it a little bit. We've transformed it. We put it over our background just to kind of crop it. We painted out the edges. We blurred it, we cut it out and put it over itself, added some chromatic aberration and added some grain. And now we have something that sort of looks like actual footage. And it's all about those details. Now, is anybody ever gonna notice this? I don't know. 
I don't know. Does it still maybe look like a still sometimes? Maybe, but it's sure a heck of a lot closer than it was. And I think that's a really cool bag of tricks to be able to make this into a somewhat believable piece of footage rather than just a still that somebody shot on their phone. And then of course we can top it off with some camera shake. We'll just use the camera shake open effect. And then we have a shot that looks like footage instead of a still. Hey, if you really like these details and making visual effects, this is the perfect video for you. It's a whole course here on YouTube where we go over the basics of creating visual effects and getting in the nitty gritty, that kind of stuff. If you like this video, you're gonna love this one right here. Okay, I'll see you over there.